your seats, your, the seats are marked with your name. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, 各位，呃，请你哋睇翻你个名牌，你个。Please、uh, identify your seats. You can look at the name plate. Uh, once again, welcome to all deputations and uh, individuals attending this meeting. Please uh, note that uh, you may tune in to Channel Zero for four language, Channel One for Cantonese, one Channel Two for English, and Channel Three for Putonghua. And that there, there are uh, a few channels for you. Um, to listen to simultaneous uh, interpretation, uh, Channel Zero is the live broadcast. That is the original version. Channel One is the Cantonese version. Channel Two is the English version, and Channel Three is the Putonghua version. Uh, May I remind all deputations that you will be given three minutes to speak, please. Uh, Properly manage your speaking time. Your speeches and submissions are not protected by the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Please also note the notice given to people attending legislative meetings in the public gallery, which has already been sent to you in our letter and uh, put on the table in front of you. If you want to give us your written submission, you can write down your name on the submission, and after the meeting, hand it to our staff. It's the eleven o one. Let's start with the first speaker, Mr. Lee Kai Wan. You have uh, three minutes. Please speak. Closer to the mic, members and uh, government officials. I used to work in the ivory trade, but I'm not practicing it anymore for many years. I want to talk about Chinese art. It's a it's a valuable art. Ivory carving is. I remember in 1986, 87. Uh, ivory exports. Uh, was among the top money earner of our uh, trade. You can check the records. Did China kill any elephant? There's no elephant in China, so there's no way we actually kill elephants. Elimination of uh, the ivory tray is an uh, insult to the art of ivory carving of China. And now the Chinese people are unable to protect this art of ours. It's really a shame. Well, they, uh, the Japanese did it. Many other countries also um, did it. Uh, I mean ivory carving, but why do you want to target ivory carving of Chinese people? Well, because they are jealous of the artifacts that we have produced. Well, we have ivory balls, which was uh, used to compare with the same produced by Japan. Uh, there were competitions. 
and uh, uh, the ivory balls carved by Chinese craftsmen could withstand the test of hot water, but the Japanese ivory balls produced by Japan will fall apart if it is immersed in hot water because they also use glue. Now, people, uh, sorry, your time's up. Miss um, Lao Ying Ting, Chairman, members, good morning. I'm the Children CE of the seven seven Chi uh, Children CE. Uh, we've at that time uh, put a question to CE on legislative proposal to ban ivory trade, and he said that was in line with international trend, and Hong Kong had to follow uh, the international practice. This has led me to think about the following issues. Should we not follow the basic law uh, when we want to introduce a uh, ivory ban? Legislation is important, but we should not violate basic law. The basic law talks about protection of, pri of ass ass assets and properties. The government's proposal means that uh, private properties uh, will, will, will be uh, destroyed, and uh, if, uh, according to CE, uh, we we have to follow the international practice, but we are not legally bound to follow the law or practice in any country. If we disregard the basic law, uh, many people will be disheartened and will lose confidence. We should not be led by the nose by foreign forces in terms of our legislation. And secondly, the, there will be impact on young people. Ivory carving is a valuable uh, art and craft of China and uh, is uh, among the, uh, in, in the in the infantry of intangible uh, heritage and now we are equating ivory uh, carving with uh, poaching of uh, elephants the government should uh, properly educate the public and people should not be led to think that uh, this uh, find out of China is equated with uh, illegal ivory trade. I, I think I, as, a, as a child CE uh, chosen by my fellow the constituents, I would like to listen to the views of uh, various quarters. And now there's no consensus in the community on the p total ban. If uh, we hasten to let enact the amendment bill, this would uh, tarnish the government's in, uh, image. This would certainly harm the government's uh, governance and credibility. I hope the government would uh, think carefully before proceed, proceeding with it so that we don't have a big uh, social division. Mr. Ng Chi Fai, I've heard that ivory carving is art. But, I've, uh, but Chinese carving can be done on other materials, not just ivory. Uh, cons conservation is important. Well, with, you know, uh, p Chinese people like to consume uh, shark's fins, and it's because of the uh, damaging effect on the ecology. We have to be considered. Ivory is not a, uh, an essential necessity. Uh, is it is the rice uh, better if you uh, use uh, a pair of uh, ivory chopsticks? Every life is entitled to survive, allowed to survive, and uh, there's and the entitlement of every living being. So I'm all in favor of uh, amending the law, and we should uh, increase the penalties. If there's no market, there will be no poaching, there will be no killing, there will be no demand if there's no market. 
So I'm in favor of the amendment bill, and there should be a total ban on ivory trade, and there should be, of course, a prohibition of uh, any import. And uh, according to the build, uh, if uh, we are talking about antique uh, items, uh, they will be allowed. I think this is not good. We should ban any trading so that the elephants will not be continued uh, will not be continued to be poached. Uh, we have no right to uh, cause any animal to extinct. We are thinking primates. We know how to uh, think. We should go for coexistence with other animals. So I'm in favor of this amendment bill, and I hope that we will not allow uh, antique ivory to to be imported. This is really. Uh, Ridiculous! Why do we have to leave such uh, gaps in our law? What are the, the government trying to achieve? Thank you. Your time's up. Uh, Professor Xiu Pang Chi. Thank you, Chairman. I represent the advisory committee on uh, rare uh, plants and animals. Uh, convened by the AFCD. My committee uh, supports the amendment build and the total ban of ivory trade. And we are also of the view that there should be no monetary compensation and penalties should be increased. I want to mention a few uh, supporting arguments. The number of elements is dwindling. According to surveys, uh, th this is uh, p partly due to uh, poaching uh, for the purpose of uh, ivory. Of course, uh, it is also partly due to the uh, degradation of the habitats. In Hong Kong, after the introduction of the scientists in the 1990s, Ivory trade has already been uh, restricted, and we are n exporting very few ivory items. But we have been criticized for many years that Hong Kong is a smuggling hub. Now, this is not good for our uh, re reputation and image. At the end of this year, uh, the mainland of China would uh, face out ivory trade. We should uh, catch up. In the uh, uh, convention of uh, state parties of scientists in 2016, uh, all state parties uh, were urged to uh, face out ivory trade ASAP. So, as one of the signatories, Hong Kong should do this. Uh, the bill would allow for five years of uh, grace period. I, I believe we uh, think this is sufficient for the trade to adjust and adapt. There's a question of whether the pirate properties would be rendered valueless. I note that uh, on the 7th of July this year, the AFCD told the Bills Committee uh, the, the response given by the department in respect of uh, protection of uh, right to property. I'm not a lawyer, but I believe uh, the response is well argued. I hope uh, the, the government can continue to talk to the trade to work out things. Ms. Ho Yin Ching. Members, um, Chairman, members, I, I, I represent a uh, animals rights group in the U.S. and also supporters of uh, my association around the world. I, I would like to thank the 
Hong Kong SAR government for doing more to protect endangered animals. Uh, Hong Kong has it, Hong Kong's image has been tarnished by the by its involvement in uh, the trade of uh, blood ivory. I, we are against paying compensation. Since 1990s, uh, the ivory traders have been given 27 years to dispose of their stocks, uh, which is, uh, in our view, more than enough. And now yeah, they are given five more, even uh, they are given five more years. If uh, compensation is paid. It will not be fair to the seven million people of Hong Kong, and many traders uh, were involved in uh, illegal smuggling ivory. Paying compensation is tantamount to giving them rewards, and this would be an incentive for illegal smugglers. The U.S. administration has already made it clear that uh, banning the ivory trade is not a about uh, forfeiting private properties, Hong Kong government should not uh, depart from that position. And uh, later this uh, last year, the I did some investigation. I was uh, I was uh, on one occasion involved in uh, guarding some confiscated ivory, and now elephants are facing extinction. So this is because of uh, illegal trade, and I hope uh, elef ivory traders should not hide behind the uh, the conservation uh, of uh, historical art. Let's emphasize my closing again in English. Hong Kong is Asia's world city, but its reputation has been stained by its blood ivory trade. I have just one simple message to the ivory traders. Stop hiding behind the so-called Chinese tradition. Animal cruelty, extinction, and criminal activities have no place in Hong Kong's cultural tradition. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have Professor Amanda with. Can you speak closer to the microphone, please? Yeah, yeah, it's working. Chairperson and members, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to address you today. I'm a law professor in the Department of Professional Legal Education at Hong Kong U, specializing in animal-related crimes. I wish to express my gratitude to the Hong Kong government for formulating this important and urgent proposal to end the local trade in ivory and amend the penalties for wildlife crimes. Hong Kong has played a significant role in bringing African elephant populations to their lowest numbers in history. The blind eye which has been turned to the continuing ivory trade in Hong Kong has facilitated the import into China of as much as 70% of the global illegal ivory trade. The recent prosecution of ivory traders for selling post-convention ivory in Shenwan demonstrates that allowing any Hong Kong trade encourages poaching, smuggling, and permits unscrupulous traders to sell illegally sourced ivory in defiance of CITES and local laws. As numerous other jurisdictions have already concluded, only a total ban on the sale of ivory will begin to undo the decades of harm caused by lack of effective legal protection for the African elephant. In regard to smuggling, enforcement statistics demonstrate that illegal shipments of ivory to Hong Kong have been increasing over the past five years, especially by sea. Despite enhanced surveillance and more frequent seizures by Hong Kong's law enforcement authorities, criminal organizations funding the poaching and smuggling of ivory to Hong Kong remain undeterred. And this is hardly surprising given the poultry sentences handed down for convictions for wildlife crime. This year, the penalties imposed for smuggling ivory have ranged from a fine of $2,000 to a sentence of three months imprisonment. Such sentences are hardly deterrent given the substantial profits to be made in Hong Kong. And the average value of seizures in endangered species is now second only to seizures in dangerous drugs. If the continued rise of this lucrative black market is to be curbed in the region, the need to raise the maximum penalties for possession and trade in endangered species must be addressed. Along with the higher penalties proposed by the government, wildlife crimes must be recognized in our legislation and in our courts as what they truly are, organized and serious crime. Attracting the full range of coercive investigative powers currently used to combat unlawful drugs and money laundering. Lastly, I wish to turn to the subject of compensation. The right to private property under Article 6 and 105 of the Basic Law is not absolute. 
the government is permitted to take reasonable and rational action to restrict citizens' free use of their property, including its sale, where the restrictions are justified and in the public interest. In this case, the government makes an extremely strong claim that the continued sale of ivory in Hong Kong compromises the legitimate societal interest in ending a trade that cannot be ethically or sustainably sourced. At current levels, poaching will send the African elephant extinct within our lifetime. The proposed ban does no more than is necessary to contain a very real and imminent threat. Further, traders have not been asked to surrender their ivory to the government. They may continue well, Thank to you, eat. Professor Whitford. Next, we'll have uh, Marco Shalapi, please. Marco. Hong Kong needs to ban ivory trade because it is killing elephants. Poachers shoot the adult elephants for their tusks. The elephants then die a horrible death, after which the poachers hack at their faces to remove the tusks. Herds are destroyed. Young elephants are left without families. Alone without the mothers, baby elephants are left to starve. Ivory is smuggled out of Africa and into Asia. Some arrives illegally in Hong Kong. Ivory may be smuggled into China and some is illegally sold by ivory traded in Hong Kong. Hong Kong, with its legal ivory trade, encourages the continued killing of elephants. I have been lucky to see elephants living in Africa, not wild ones, but ones that were rescued and lived on a game reserve with other wild animals such as rhinos and hippos. Even on the reserve, hundreds of miles from where wild elephants and rhinos lived, the rangers were scared the poachers might come in at night and take and kill the animals just to get their tusks or horns to make money. We in Hong Kong need to do something more to protect the wild animals in Africa and other countries. Banning the ivory trade in Hong Kong will help protect the elephants. Improving the laws and punishing people properly will help to protect more endangered species. It makes me sad to see how beautiful elephants suffer just to satisfy, satisfy man's needless desire. I hope that we can save the elephants in the wild and protect other species too. It would be a great shame if we can only see them preserved in zoos. Do we really want to see the biggest land mammal die out in the wild? Please help our planet ban the ivory trade and properly protect endangered species. Thank you. Thank you, Margo. Next, we have uh, Mr. Chris Ledismo from Save the Elephants. My name is Chris Ledismo, the head of wildlife security at Save the Elephants in northern Kenya. I am from a people called the Samburu. For generations, the Samburu have loved and respected the elephant that we live among. This is why it's natural for me to give my life defending them. I work in tough conditions as a wildlife ranger. The ivory that the trade has brought us more criminals than ever before, poachers who are waiting to ambush us at every turn. Dreaders sometimes say that they fear their livelihoods will be affected by the closure of the ivory market, but for us, it is our lives, not our livelihoods, that are at risk from the criminals that kill to supply ivory for sale. I'm here to represent my fallen rangers who are killed by poachers. I still recall the death of my very closest friend, Joseph, who was shot dead while on the line of duty in June this year. This is still pain in my heart. I am here also to represent the community that I come from, who suffer from the death of those who protect the heritage from poachers and from the damage to their livelihoods. I am here to represent my family. This is my wife. This, I, leave, I leave her and my three sons for long periods not knowing when will, will I return, nor if I will return. I know it, it hurts. I know it breaks her heart. But still, because I know no one keeps the peace in our landscape. Eventually, we will all victims of poachers, one way or other. And I'm here to represent elephants who have no voice. This is Shangila. Whom I knew well, he was a young man with small tusks, but he was still killed for his ivory. The, the day he died, I was the one who uncovered him. 
like him, 100,000 were killed for the ivory between the year 2010 and 2012. And we are still in the battle. I know many traders may still, t may still say this killing is nothing to do with us. But as long as they are compensated, more elephants will die to fuel this trade. And I will lose more comrades or even my life as a wildlife ranger. I understand that people in Hong Kong are not the ones who are buying ivory. The buyers are from outside, yet one, everyone else in the world thinks that it's you. I'm here to show you that we in Kenya are doing all we can. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ledismo. Uh, next, we have uh, Dr. Yvonne Sadovi. Dr. Sadovi, please. Thank you uh, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm a professor of biology, and I work on sustainable use and trade in animals. I've been 24 years in Hong Kong. I strongly support the proposed ivory ban. Decisive action has already been taken by major ivory trading countries and is particularly important in Hong Kong because of our massive role in this trade. Unfortunately, laundering and illegal trade in ivory appear to be common into and through our city and we cannot at the moment control this. We have international commitments in halting declines and helping source countries to do this. Individual countries can't do this alone. Five years to start the ban, however, is much too long given the alarming rates of poaching and illegal trade occurring. In five years' time, a further half of much reduced African elephants will be gone. The ban should start by the end of this year, and there is little to be gained. Waiting five more years, too much is to be lost. Ivory is valuable, is valuable but it is not like gold, to which I've heard it compared to in this debate. Ivory comes from living, disappearing animals. The extinction clock of African elephants is ticking. We know that time ran out completely for the elephants that once roamed much of China. So we cannot and should not let it happen again. Some people who oppose the trade ban argue that ivory is culturally important. If true, then surely those who care about this tradition should be the ones fighting to ensure that elephants have a future. But this is not happening. Instead, the ivory trade is mostly, it seems, about high profits in reality, little about culture. Times have changed and young people today want to preserve our planet's natural heritage and see animals alive. The world has changed and we must change with it. Hong Kong is good at change and adapts very well, so why not the ivory trade? I strongly support increased penalties for wildlife crime. Sadly, much wildlife crime today is associated with organized and serious crime that must be stopped and our penalties must reflect the misery and cruelty associated with illegal trade in animals. Finally, I strongly oppose compensation. Traders have known for almost three decades of the increasing risks of trading ivory. Government has sent clear messages over many years from the burning of tons of ivory to long engagement with traders. Elephants have long been declining and many ivory traders have refocused their trade. So those traders who have continued have taken a calculated risk, hoping to gain increased prices from declining ivory. Declining ivory. What is the justification to reward such behavior with compensation using taxpayers' money? Who will compensate the families of a thousand plus rangers killed during the poaching? Who will compensate people in future who cannot get income and who will compensate young people who will never see elephants? Ms. Shem, good morning, members. Three years ago, well, three months ago, I uh, joined the public hearing, and less than three months ago were two major event, uh, major events. And on the sixth of July, the customs cracked down a major ivory syndicate. Seven point two tons of ivory were seized, and some came from uh, young elephants. And so that means young elephants were being killed too. Does it mean that the opportunists might be really taking the opportunity before the ban is imposed to smuggle large volume of ivory into Hong Kong so that they can get compensation in the future? If this is true, well, the government should not fall into the trap of the crime syndicates. They should not give out any compensation. On the contrary, the government should increase the penalty to penalize the uh, criminals. Now, uh, ivory ban has been implemented successfully in other places. No compensation has been made to ivory traders. And the Chinese government has banned ivory 
carvings and processing. It has never uh, made any compensation to the ivory traders. No country has ever done that. If compensation is going to be made, uh, only worse consequences will be created. It will um, encourage people to hoard ivory so that they can get larger compensation, and that will only encourage more poaching. Second thing, um, Wait Lauter, uh, the PAMS found, Foundation founder, sh he was killed on the 16th of June. I hope uh, that the, I wish my best wishes for the, his family members. Uh, his death will not discourage the rangers on the country. The rangers will ev even be more determined to, to crack down on wildlife crime. Um, here, I would pay my res like to pay my uh, respect or tribute to all the rangers, and they treasure wildlife more than their own lives, and we should pay the them the highest respect. Now, if we talk about compensation, these very great. Uh, rangers, they've been killed brutally, and um, their families lost a loved one. Their um, bereaved families should be, get the compensation instead of the ivory traders. Because of, say, the ivory um, ornament, and we're seeing rangers being killed. So this is uh, an insult to human uh, humanity. Well, I, uh, elephants uh, can't talk, but no voice doesn't mean no choice. Um, we should um, look the matter with our heart. The elephants suffer a great pain before they are killed or they die. So we will speak for those who protect the elephants. Thank you. We have Mr. Lam Lok Wing from the Lam Chun Wishing Square. I'm a retired principal of a school. I'm also at the Lam Chun Village Head. Well, we would like to live happily. Um, these are the riches of the rural people. And we would like to preserve the traditional culture of villages. Uh, when we talk about tradition, it means thinking moral values passed over the generations. And it is very important that a society protects its cultural heritage. But we have to make distinctions here. There are good traditions and bad traditions, and we should not blindly uh, maintain or conserve all traditions. We should only pass on the good traditions. Now, ivory trade, well, say that uh, ivory carving is traditional art, but we can have carvings in on stone, wood, and other materials instead of ivory. Well, ivory carving is a good tradition, and it uh, deserves to be maintained. But then, I, I don't think we should um, have carvings on ivory. We should have car We can have carvings on other materials, and we can still maintain the carving um, craftsmanship by using other materials. And ivory carving cannot be considered a cultural tradition because ivory doesn't come from China. It comes from Africa. Well, elephants have feelings, and they are highly intelligent. And illegal ivory trade is actually making the elephants extinct. And the poachers have brutally killed the elephants for their ivory or tusks. And there has been bloodshed. And at the same time, the rangers who are protecting the nature are, are very often targets for killings as well. And they left, leave behind uh, families. And just now, Chris and another um, ex-policeman in Hong Kong uh, went to Africa to become a ranger. And he will, has become a target for killing by the poachers. Well, these are real examples. And if we lose uh, elephants, the tourism industry in Africa will also uh, suffer a loss. And the economy will also be dealt a blow. And illegal ivory trade will uh, cost us lives. And we are villagers. We want to uh, people to live happily and peacefully. But then because of the ivory trade, people are not living happily or peacefully. The um, elephants play an important role in maintaining the balance in the ecosystem. So if we kill the elephants, the ecosystem will also be seriously damaged. And forests uh, will dwindle. Well, your time's up, sorry. 
Next one is Ms. Liu Yingnam, uh, Chairman, uh, Government Officials. Uh, good morning. I've watched this YouTube clip. This is a story about and uh, sunset time in the grassland, and there is a sunset, and there were very beautiful clouds, and the uh, woman was, is uh, bringing two children, and, and she was running, and the uh, the criminals are around. The, th the family of three were running, exhausted, and they don't have um, the capability to um, to protect themselves, and they are waiting for death uh, to, uh, they, they are waiting to die. And the mother and the two children, where they, the mother hugs uh, the two children and the bullets flying all around. And the women with a short at the back and the children watched this and they cried um, loudly. And this is so, so sad. And the women um, fell on the ground and the women's image turned into an uh, elephant, big elephant, and the two children's image turned into the two uh, young elephants. And the um, elephants uh, fell on the ground. And the two uh, white elephants were crying beside the mother, very sad, heartbroken. They are helpless and they suffer so much pain. And the two uh, young elephants are separated from the mother, and the mother elephant died sadly, and her, her soul uh, disappears together with the sunset. And then the uh, and the there is this text line at, towards the end of the clip. What is what if this isn't a movie? Well, this uh, story tells the tragedy of uh, elephants. I am a mother of two myself. I felt so sad after watching this video. I uh, cry and cry. And the bre best present that I can give to my children is a healthy earth or globe. Now, the ma there is a massacre of the um, elephants and the elephants' tusks were taken uh, away from the elephants and the rescuers arrived later on in that club and we saw the uh, tusk of the elephants were taken away, uh, are stolen away and the skull was broken but then the elephant is still alive and still crying so we, we can't Im even imagine the pain of the uh, elephant and the young elephants uh, bec have become orphans, and the young elephants in an orphanage were crying for help, and the nanny of the young elephants were wiping the tears for the uh, young elephants, the baby elephants. We we should no, lose no time to rescue the elephants, or else we'll only be uh, seeing elephants in the videos and the books in the future. Mr. Mr. Chu Chuck Yu. Morning, Chairman. I am ten years old. I'm Chu Chuck Yu. I have a good friend here with me in the chamber. My friend's name is Roy. He is a very uh, lovely elephant toy. Roy is uh, loved and spoiled by the family. My mom, dad, and um, your elder brother like uh, Roy. Roy is a orphan. Um, elephant living in Africa. I learned about Roy in the, on the me, social media and the online. And Roy was a, originally a very lively um, elephant in Africa, and she was he was uh, she was very happy when drinking milk. But on the same at the same day, a tourist found that the mother elephant fell on the ground, and Roy seemed to understand that what had happened. His her eyes were uh, swelled with tears, and it seemed that she was saying that I was heartbroken, and that the uh, entire elephant family was uh, trying to comfort Roy. Roy couldn't. Um, leave the mum. The rescuer uh, found that the Roy's mum was um, hit by a toxic arrow by of the poachers, and the rescue team had to uh, separate Roy with the family because there was no other who can provide the milk to Roy. And the Roy was taken to an orphanage, and Roy luckily adapted to the uh, orphanage environment uh, very quickly, and they could he could live with the other um, uh, elephants. Now, several weeks ago, Mom took uh, showed a documentary of 
elephants to me so that I could understand why Roy has become an elephant. Like human beings, uh, uh, young elephants need the care of their mums and dads. And I told uh, Toy Roy, and I hope that he can, she can reunite with the family. Now, when I was four, Dad taught me how to cycle. Uh, Dad made the demonstration, and then he was trying to help me. Now, without the my dad's help, I would not be able to learn uh, about cycling so quickly, or I would end up in injured in the hospital. Um, actually, I bumped into the um, edge of the pavement many times, and ultimately, I learned cycling after my dad has taught me. I hope, I, I think I'm very happy. I hope that all small elephants will be like myself very happy there are now only three rhinos left all the world over and my wish is that when i grow up i will visit um wild elephants in africa and i would uh, uh have meet with the real roy now actually i'm taking leave from the school to attend this hearing and i would like to share my wish with you i hope that you will not disappoint me how i yep. thank you next Ms. Yip Chang Seng. Um, Chairman, members, good morning. I'm a mother of two and a secondary school teacher. I think our focus should not be limited to Hong Kong. We should think about the correct values for future generations. For us, the most precious thing for our kids is not to um, train them for America's Got Talent or um, sign them up for a prestigious school. And um, the most important thing is to teach them the right values, and that's why I'm here. Some people say that um, the lack of compensation or the enhancement of penalties would jeopardize such um, Chinese crafts. I really doubt what values still remain of such crafts. and. Um, this is only for the rich people, but how it cannot compare with the value of conservation. When have we become so selfish in ignoring the lives of others? So um, the ability to ch cherish or treasure things is very important. We can build many different hobbies. We can read, we can exercise, we can keep pets. So. Um, we have to teach our future generation how to cherish things. Everyone has the responsibility to teach our future generation to love nature and love animals. Our hobbies and interests should not be built upon endangered species that cannot help themselves. The second important value is integrity. A lot of evidence show that the illegal import of ivory and um, a lot of um, old stocks still remain after 27 years. It showed that the ivory traders have been unscrupulous and um, they have been um, angling for compensation. If we do not voice out, how can we teach our children and students the value of integrity? Empathy is also an important value, and this is an important Chinese value as well. A lot of evidence show that the illegal smuggling of ivory led to the agonizing deaths of a lot of endangered elephants and a lot of rangers have been killed. And um, these ivory have ended up in other countries via Hong Kong. So um, can we say that this is irrelevant to us? Shouldn't we extend our sympathy to the miserable Africans if we do not crack down on this, we would become the culprits of the death of elephants as well as rangers, and um, we are helping the, um, we are aiding the killing of ordinary people. Professor Dungeon from the University of Hong Kong. Members and government officials, uh, my name is David Dungeon. I'm Chair Professor of Ecology and Biodiversity at the University of Hong Kong, and I'm speaking today on behalf of our Conservation Forensics Laboratory. The most recent science demonstrates that ongoing poaching of African elephants far exceeds their population growth rates. If continued, it will cause their extinction. We know this 
because a recent study in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in the US reported that between 2010 and 2012, 100,000 African elephants were killed, 40,000 in 2011 alone. That's more than 100 a day. Another study showed that forest elephants in Africa were declining in population by 62% between 22 and 2011. A third study of populations of savanna elephants in Africa showed that they were declining by 8% each year currently. That's equivalent to half of the population disappearing within nine years. Mm. Clearly, such losses are unsustainable, and they'll result in the disappearance of the African elephant in your lifetime, and most certainly in the lifetimes of the children who are in this chamber with us today. <clears throat> Coincident with these population declines, hundreds of tons of elephant ivory has been shipped from Africa to Asia. We know that because genetic tests of ivory shipments intercepted over the past 20 years confirm that all the ivory originated from African elephants. And that's from a study published in the journal Science just recently. Radiocarbon dating of some of those shipments shows that 90% of the ivory seized after 2002 was derived from elephants killed recently after the 89 ban in trade. Hong Kong plays a major role in the trade of elephant ivory from Africa. We know that because of the shipments that have been examined, five were seized in Hong Kong and the forensics showed that they contained tusks from animals killed after the 1989 ban in international trade in ivory. Recently, AFCD brought a successful prosecution of illegal sale of ivory published in a shop in Sheung Wan, and the forensics revealed again that the elephants were killed after the 1989 ban. So clearly there's indisputable scientific evidence that ivory from recently killed African elephants is traded on the streets of Hong Kong. The science clearly indicates the future of elephants in Africa will depend substantially on far-sighted action by the Hong Kong SAR government. We therefore urge the Hong Kong government to end all commercial trade of elephant ivory with immediate effect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, the next speaker will be Mr. P.S. Duffy. Mr. Duffy, please. Legislative councillors and representatives of the government, elephants are one of the f most iconic animals alive today. And it deeply saddens me to know that Hong Kong, the place I've spent my entire life living, is contributing to the mass slaughtering of this wonderful and unique animal. Ivory is not only about the bloody and brutal slaughter of elephants. Wildlife conservationists and park rangers are also losing their lives fighting this cause. As many have already mentioned, just recently Wayne Lotter, the founder of Pam's Foundation, was shot and killed in Tanzania. His work has helped tremendously to stop poaching and just like many others, he has died, died protecting African wildlife. Thousands of people and hundreds of thousands of elephants have been killed, all for material which is not essential to the survival of human beings. Since the total ban of all sales of ivory obtained before the year 1990, Hong Kong traders have stockpiled 700 tons of ivory. Now, 27 years later, Hong Kong traders still have over 70 tons of ivory left. It seems strange that in 27 years, these traders cannot clear their stock. Although traders claim all their stock is legal, many have been documenting, revealing to customers that they buy blood ivory and pass it off as legal. Another point these traders make is that ivory carving is an ancient Chinese art and tradition. The truth is, ivory is no magic material that allows for beautiful carving. Carving that is done with ivory can easily be done with wood and special plastics. Ivory is an outdated trade and tradition, which belongs in the past and has no place here in 2017. I believe Hong Kong is making the right steps in this bill, and I hope that with it comes changes that will bring about a better world and an end to the ivory trade. I also believe that no compensation should be given to ivory traders, and there should be an increase in wildlife crime punishments. Traders have been caught, being caught selling blood ivory and should not be rewarded with compensation or given a light sentence for engaging in illegal activity. They have had 27 years to clear their stock, and if this bill passes, they will have another five years. Since 1990, six Olympic Games have been played. Five US presidents have been in office. 
They have had a longer time to clear their stock than I have been alive. It has been more than enough time. Mahatma Gandhi once said, the greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. I, hope that the, I hold that the more helpless a creature, the more entitled it is to protection by man from the cruelty of man. Please do not delay the implementation of the ban. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how are you? So, to you, I so, to you, so to you, God. Mr. So Chi Wai, thank you. With years of investigation, ivory traders have still been engaged in um, cross-border dealing. If this continues, Hong Kong would be seen as supporting such activities. Ivory traders have trading has been proved to um, fuel cross-boundary um, syndicates and crime, and the growth of such crimes means that our security is under jeopardy. So why should we still um, support such acts which would endanger ourselves? Since I was educated when small, I was taught to love nature and cherish all living things. Why does our society still tolerate such commercial activities which are pushing elephants towards extinction. So long as ivory trading still exists, Hong Kong cannot um, absorb itself. We, I support the ban against ivory trading. Ivory traders are asking the government for compensation and I'm strongly against it because any compensation would mean that ivory is still profitable and with profit poaching will continue so that um, money can be made. Past investigations and um, a pair of ivory chopsticks found last year proved that illegal ivory trading still exists in Hong Kong. If the government makes a compensation, it means that they would support such illegal acts. We do not support the smuggling of population or drugs. So why would the Hong Kong government make compensation for smuggled population or drugs? The um, acquisition of ivory is extremely inhumane. Elephant, female elephants die an agonizing death and um, their children would um, have to um, lose their parents. So how can we teach, what can we teach to our future generation? Ivory traders said they, they are merely inheriting the ivory left by their um, previous generations. As a student, I have no wish to inherit such bloody business. We should um, encourage our young people to be self-sufficient and the government should step up the penalties against wildlife crimes, and this would achieve a deterrent effect. I urge the legislators to think on behalf of our future generations. Thank you very much. Mr. Sin Ho Ming from the Hong Kong Racing School. Thank you very much. I'm the founder of the Hong Kong Racing School, Sin Ho Ming. We have had a lot of recent discussions on ivory trade, and um, I'm very concerned about the Af the African elephants. Elephants are the largest animals on land, and healthy elephants can live till 70. They are very smart, they are great at socializing, and um, they have a lot of emotions. They are very similar to humans in many ways. They play a crucial role in maintaining the equality of the ecosystem and their droppings can also become plant fertilizers and their movements can help propagate plants. In ecology or in, in biology, elephants are important in protecting the environment and maintaining the, the savannas. The slaughtering of elephants would mean that many wild animals would also lose their habitats and driven to extinction. Ivory trade is the main reason for the sharp decline in African elephant population. Hong Kong is the biggest global ivory trade center, which is an, um, 
which would um, negatively affect our image. It has been found that some um, people have been exploiting loopholes in our laws in engaging in illegal ivory trade. So it's unreasonable. It's unreasonable that these traders are asking the government for compensation. Some of my students are very concerned about elephant conservation, and um, I founded the Racing School to correct misunderstandings of the society on racing. Racing athletes must be disciplined, but some ivory traders have no discipline, so they should not receive compensation. Racing is about fairness and justice, but ivory trading is not is unfair and illegal, and they should be punished. We should learn to play by the rules. So um, the government should legislate to step up punishments against wildlife crime. And the Hong Kong government should work with other governments in ending ivory trade and um, cracking down on illegal wildlife crimes. They should plug the loopholes so that they can rid of the bad name. Thank you very much. We have a few young friends first. Ms. Lam Ho. Chairman, members, good morning. My name is Lam Ho. Mr. Lam Ho. My, I'm 11. I'm in Century 1. I think the ban on ivory trade is imminent because um, the elephants are on the brink of distinction. From documentaries, I learned that ivory trade meant that elephants are constantly slaughtered if we do not end ivory trade today. Ele elephant elephants from Africa will vanish forever and we will only learn about these elephants from pictures or TV programs. Elephants are very intelligent and highly socialized animals. They live in groups just like humans. Under the leadership of the senior elephants, the, the young elephants learn the living skills. They have long-term memories and emotions and um, they would grieve over elephants who pass away. So elephants and humans are similar in many ways. When poachers kill the elephants, the, the elephants' companions and children would um, take a great hit psychologically and mentally. So we would not allow the same to happen on humans. Therefore, human beings should not poach elephants to satisfy our greeds because um, that would lead to their plight. There's no U-turn in life. Since the survival of elephants is closely tied to ivory trading, the Hong Kong government should ban ivory trading immediately because the um, survival of a species is more important than anything else. Currently, the penalties against wildlife crime in Hong Kong are very light compared with other places of the world. That's why it cannot deter anyone. My wish is to become a fencing athlete. And as an athlete, we have the mission is to promote justice and fairness and we should punish the um, wildlife criminals criminals in order to give justice to the dead elephants and rangers and um, this way the um, families the um, surviving elephants and families of rangers would um, have some justice I want to thank the rangers and investigators here because they are living a very dangerous life Thank you very much. Next, Ms. Haley Chan. Thank you. And council members, I strongly feel that Hong Kong should completely ban ivory trade. Firstly, I want to share with all of you some statistics about elephants. 
15 to 20,000 elephants are killed due to poaching every year. There are only approximately 415,000 African elephants left in the world now. 30% of African elephants have disappeared in the past seven years. If my calculations are correct, all the African elephants will be gone if human keeps on poaching elephants within 20 years. That means elephants will become history in our next generations. Elephant is a very intelligent and human-friendly animal, which has over 55 million years of history in our planet. They have been highly respected by lots of people in many countries, and we must protect them. <coughs> Secondly, I'm going to talk about ivory trade. Ivory has no actual use for any household purposes, apart from decorations. Ivory is mainly for merchants to make money from trading. Most ivory came from African elephants. Poachers from countries like Tongo trade elephant tusks to finance war and terrorist activities. In other words, if we can't stop ivory trading from happening, we can't stop war and terrorism in these countries. Although there is a debate that antique ivory trade should be legal, people can easily say that ivory they have is antique, whether or not. That creates a loophole for illegal ivory trade to happen, so I really feel that ivory trade has to be completely banned. Lastly, I want to tell all of you enforcement of law to stop ivory trade is very important. Our regulation is insufficient to stop smugglers from importing ivory to Hong Kong at the moment. The penalty is not heavy enough to stop illegal ivory import and trade in Hong Kong. I encourage you to consider increasing fine and imprisonment of illegal ivory trade. There are almost 50 to 100 elephants dying every day. Banning ivory trade now is crucial. I disagree with the suggestion to totally ban ivory trade in three phases till 2021. This will just give poachers more time to kill more elephants and expedite elephants to extinct. Smugglers would be the only tar party taking most of the advantages. I am also against compensation being paid to ivory traders, as this may encourage more smuggling trades to happen and let people make their claims legally. We must completely ban ivory trade in Hong Kong as soon as possible. China, which is the biggest market of ivory trade, is already ahead of us to completely ban ivory trade by the end of this year. We should co consider following the same to show Hong Kong is not a lag of legislation. Please, action to save elephants. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. Next, we have Sophia Hassan. Sophia, I can't really see you. How old are you? I'm nine years old. Okay, please go on. The greed for ivory is threatening to extinguish elephants in our lifetime. In fact, in 2015, 20,000 African elephants were killed for their tusks. Every year, 25,000 to 30,000 elephants are killed for their tusks. The only living creature that needs ivory are elephants. Elephants have turned into refugees of their own world. Furthermore, elephants have feelings like us. So let's switch it around. Let's say elephants were hunting us and wanted our fingers for jewelry. Would you like that? Nova Hong Kong has a five-year plan to ban ivory trade by 2021. That's too long. Nevertheless, there are loopholes in implementation. Plan is what you have, is what you sell, and there was no replacements. The stocks have remained more or less the same, which can't be explained by the demand going down. Hong Kong has 400 licenses with 30,000 ivory items for sale, and it's more than any other city in the world. In short, if we want a world of elephants, we need to speed up the ivory ban in Hong Kong. I strongly don't support the idea of giving money to the ivory traders. I think that this will encourage more and more people to poach and offer elephants. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Please. Dear Chairman and Council Members, I strongly believe that Hong Kong should ban ivory trade. Elephant population plummeted by about 90% in one century due to habitat destruction and massive poaching, according to statistics by WWF. 33,000 elephants die of poaching every year. Poachers are not only threatening elephants, but also humans who are protecting elephants. Hong Kong is a major city of the world's ivory trade. It is not only a big market for ivory demand, but also a transit station for ivory trade. In July 2017, authorities in Hong Kong have announced what they say is the world's largest ever seizure of about 7.2 tons of ivory 
tusks with an estimated street value of close to 72 million Hong Kong dollars. Elephants are beautiful and incredibly intelligent creatures. They're part of us as us human beings. Elephants have feelings too. They can be happy, sad, angry, and frustrated. One third of an elephant's tusk is inside its head. In order to, in order to get the whole tusk, the poachers either cut it out from a living elephant, it then dies slowly in agony, or they kill the elephant and cut the tusk out. Imagine one day you're walking down the street doing nothing wrong. Someone pins you to the ground. You struggle, but it is useless. They pull out all of your teeth. Blood pours out from your mouth. How would you feel? If you give compensation to ivory traders to ban ivory trade, they assume the opposite. For example, a child loves Pokemon cards, but his parents want him to stop playing Pokemon cards. His parents say, if you give me all of your Pokemon cards, I'll give you a lot of cash. Would that help? No. Ivory is used for jewelry and ornaments. It is replaceable. Please stop harming elephants out of human greed. Please ban ivory trade. Please don't give compensation to ivory traders. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Next, we have Ru Chao Ru. Please. The elephant has been walking the earth for over 55 million years. Ivory trade can bring these innocent creatures down if humans continue progressing as we are. It is a common fact that the elephant population is shooting steeply downwards. And if we do not end the ivory trade in Hong Kong, the probability will be higher that the generation of elephants will end in our hands. I would like to bring up that the items fashioned by ivory could be created perfectly well using any other material like alabaster and clay. But according to John Colvalli of National Geographic, part of the reason ivory trade is still in existence is because we like to show off our rich artifacts crafted from ivory, and we believe that it is a wonderful gift to give. It blesses you with social status. It imparts happiness and a sense of well-being. But in fact, ivory doesn't bring this to someone. In fact, it brings sorrow, death, and pain. To take away poachers' jobs, we shouldn't give compensation to them. Compensation will just trigger another wave of poachers so that they themselves will earn a compensation. We have refused to give a compensation to any poachers, and we should keep it like this. Every hour, four elephants are killed. I'd like you to visualize. Elephants, um, a family of elephants, are walking towards a mud hole, minding their own business. Then suddenly, a poachers attack them, leaving um, poachers attack the mother, leaving her to die an agonizing death. While the baby elephant watches as her tusk is gored out of her skull. Isn't it obvious how barbaric this is? People killing you because you f they forget that you're alive and can feel the pain of dying. Imagine this happening to you or your family, or your child, um, left all alone in the world, with no one to take care of her, le left to starve to death. And this happens around four times every hour. Ultimately, I stand with the government in their decision of not giving compensation to ivory traders and to end the poaching and deaths of countless elephants once and for all. Uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, my friends, Summer and Cynthia, for making the poster for me. Thank you. Thank you, Ru. Uh, Next. Uh, we have Christine Law, Miss Christine Law. I represent Conservation International to speak in support of the legislative proposal from the Hong Kong SAL government to ban ivory trade and to in increase the penalties for illegal smuggling of endangered spe species. would like to make three suggestions to make the law more, even more effective. First, expedite the uh, phasing out of ivory trade. And after the amendment bill is passed, uh, we should uh, implemented ASAP so as to tie in with the timetable of the mainland uh, which is the end of this year. Otherwise Hong Kong would be a safe haven for illegal smuggling of uh, ivory will be the laughing stock in the international uh, arena. And if we allow the trade to continue until 2021, poachers will be encouraged to kill more elephants before that deadline. And that will also mean a more difficult enforcement task for Hong Kong. Extending the period uh, would uh, defer the transformation of ivory traders. I support uh, the uh, uh, proposal not to provide any compensation. No country in the world has provided economic compensation to ivory traders. If we create a precedent here, 
then uh, all the uh, pouch ivory will be disguised as uh, a legitimate stockpile. Uh, China only allows 12 months for the uh, elimination of stockpiles. And if we allow the uh, ivory traders uh, more time, it's unreasonable. If we allow compensation, we keep compensation and allow the uh, illegal stocks to be disguised as uh, legitimate ones, then we'll be supporting through taxpayers' money the illegal pouching of elements and the continuation of this. Uh, this uh, undesirable trade. And thirdly, uh, there should be heavier penalties. The uh, imprisonment term should be, should be increased to at least 10 years. This will be in line with international norm. If lower penalties are imposed, criminals may choose Hong Kong to be the, uh, the, the number one uh, operation base for them. China will also phase out uh, ivory trade. It's not just about uh, elephants which are on the brink of extinction. We are also talking about criminal syndicates behind such activities. So if we do not enforce the law strictly, the, the uh, security threats will continue. The demand comes mainly from uh, Hong Kong, mainland China and the US. And the world looks to Hong Kong to uh, demonstrate that we are a leader in terms of uh, international ethics, it's important that we ban the trade immediately. Uh, your time's up. Dr. Jane Gary. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf of both the Hong Kong Vet Association and the China Hong Kong Vet Association. Both associations strongly support the proposed amendments to CAP 586 and firmly believe these amendments will greatly improve not only the welfare and protection of elephants, but also of people on the ground in Africa. It's a sad fact that an average of three to four elephants are killed every hour in Africa, amounting to over 30,000 elephants per year. This mass slaughter mainly occurs to satisfy the demand for ivory products in Asia, with Hong Kong playing a major role in this trade. We currently have the dubious distinction of being the city with the world's largest retail ivory market. It's not hard to comprehend the major welfare issue involved in the method of slaughter of the world's largest land animal, but it's also a well-recognized scientific fact that elephants are highly intelligent and social creatures who suffer deep emotional stress and trauma when group members die. Conservation-wise, everyone is aware that elephants are a keystone species, playing a vital role in men helping maintain forest and savanna ecosystems. The continued depletion of elephant numbers will have a major impact on many species of animals and plants. <clears throat> However, this is not just a conservation and animal welfare issue, but a human issue, impacting many through the violence and intimidation that individuals and organized networks use on a daily basis, especially in the field. According to the Green Line Foundation, a thousand rangers have been killed in the line of duty in the past 10 years an average of almost two rangers killed every week. As such, it is vital to impose a complete ban on the trade of ivory. It's a well-known fact legal ivory is often used as a front for the illegal trade. Legal ivory trade anywhere in the world encourages poaching and slaughter of elephants. In addition, we fully support the proposed increase in maximum penalties and sincerely hope they will be used as a deterrent. As unfortunately recent history shows, fines for smuggling and selling ivory have been low. Finally, we are against compensation being paid to traders. Hong Kong paying compensation would set a disastrous precedence, reinforcing the concept that ivory is a valuable commodity. Stockpiling would likely occur in countries where closure of the trade is also being considered. Paying compensation would only lead to the slaughter of more elephants, the murder of more people, and a general increase in criminal activity. Both associations sincerely hope there will be no delay in passing the proposed amendments. The time is now, and then Hong Kong can truly claim to be Asia's world city and help put an end to this inhumane trade. Thank you, Dr. Green. Thank you. Um, uh, Next, we have... Um, Mr. Tang Tu Kwan from New People's Party. Mr. 
，希望公平同埋直接咁去處理本港剩餘嘅合法象牙存貨，令到政府嘅計劃可以順利咁。With the existing stockpiles, I hope the the end New People's Party would、uh, make reference to the practice of the Palace Museum of Thailand and the ivory so recovered through a repurchasing agreement can be used for public、uh, exhibition purposes. And also to remind people that such items should no longer be traded, and、uh, th thereby reducing the demand. The New People's Party have talked to many craftsmen and traders. We know the trade also、uh, supports the phasing out of the ivory trade, but the、uh, amendment built、uh, would mean that the uh, legally uh, possessed uh, ivory would、uh, lose the the value, and. And that's why the trade is not、uh, in support of the current proposed、uh, plan. Over the years,、uh, they have been given pre-convention certification to legally hold on to their stocks. But since the international ban, uh, uh, we are not allowed to export uh, the uh, the stocks, and therefore that that's why、uh, they have remaining. Uh, ivory materials. It's not that they don't want to dispose of them; they just can't. Although the government is saying that、uh, they will be given a great、uh, a grace period of、uh, of five years, S since they were given licenses to legally possess the ivory,、um, which means that、uh, their, their stocks are le、uh, legally、uh, possessed. But now.、Uh, They are very aggrieved that、uh, they will not be given any compensation for、uh, legitimate properties. I,、uh, I would like to suggest the government、uh, buy back those ivory for public education ex exhibition, so that we can、uh, effectively reduce the、uh, demand for the illegal products. Global March for Elephants, please. Habari ma bibi na mabwana. Greetings from Tanzania. I am Shubet Morabu. I am a son of Africa. I bring you good tidings from the people of my land. I am here to plead with you to do the right thing and shut down the evil trade in Hong Kong. More than 60 percent of Tanzania's elephants have been lost to poaching and trafficking over the last five years. The loss of Africa's wild heritage weighs heavily upon my heart. I weep for the elephants. I weep for my people. Just about two weeks ago, a close friend of mine was killed. He had received many death threats because of the ivory trade. His name was Wayne Lotta, and because of his work, many leaders in the illegal ivory trade were caught and brought to justice. He was 51 years old, was a husband, a father. And a good man was shot because he was protecting our heritage, killed for protecting our elephants. Thousands of rangers have also lost their lives to protect the last iconic giants of Africa. All these for some ivory carvings. The Hong Kong ivory traders ask for government compensation. Where is the compensation to all my people who have died because of their business? They have had almost thirty years of notice that the ivory trade needs to stop. Because it is pushing elephants to extinction, I say that there should be no compensation. Do the right thing for my people, my continent, and all of our children too. Protect the last of the gentle giants who roam our earth. Let us do the right thing now. Let us shut down this trade that brings so much grief to so many. I thank you on behalf of Aqua Meridian, Future for Elephants, the Global March for Elephants and Rhinos. Okoa Tembo, Tanzania, and Generation Awakening. Thank you so much, Asante Sana. Thank you. Ah, today, lah, so all the sixty-two organizations, so sixty-two deputations and individuals have spoken. We still have、uh, forty minutes or so. So, first of all, I would like to invite the administration to give an overall response to the views expressed today. Is it, Mr. Chair? Under Secretary, you are you going to speak on behalf of the government? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. First of all, I'd like to thank all all who have come, and for your views. 
and I would like to uh, succinctly respond to some of the uh, major views expressed. Ivory trade leads to poaching and other illegal activities and loss of life is an international consensus of uh, a fact indeed and I believe it can be substantiated by a lot of uh, evidence and uh, information so there's an international consensus to comprehensively ban the ivory trade uh, it's nothing new to ban ivory trade. It's not that we start only to talk about this now. Back in 1990s, uh, there was already an exercise to do this, and we also enacted laws to uh, face out ivory. In the 1990s, uh, we said we uh, understood that there would be an impact to the ivory trade and the value of ivory and it was recognized that we would take a long process to eliminate the trade. So for the 1990 um, order, under that order, we are still allowing some form of ivory trade. So that's why some deputations have said the a AFCD has still allowed for some import because that was not a total ban um, for the 1990 uh, directive. But we said that we would uh, take a gradual approach to come to a complete ban on the ivory trade. So that's why the government departments have raised a proposal to help the trade to transform and that will be retraining providers. So that would be a total ban. That's the um, end. Uh, objective. Now it's been 27 years now, and it's the time that we impose a total ban on ivory trade. So Hong Kong is an international city, and we must uh, play our part. And it's time indeed for us, for Hong Kong, to impose a total ban on ivory trade. Now, of course, we um, have heard many views on that. First, is this total ban go breaching the uh, basic law? This is an important subject matter. Uh, we have sought detailed legal opinion, and we have um, uh, given it um, great thoughts. And that the legal advice that we got is that our ban will not go against the basic law, and it will not be infringing on human rights because we are not, con you know, in a way, confiscating any private property. Now, um, I will not go over the detailed legal points with you, but anyway, we have uh, considered this point very carefully and the proposal that we are proposing, and that is the total ban. It will not go against the basic law or infringe human rights. And another discussion point is the request for the Hong Kong government to make compensation because of the ban. We have looked at the practices in, in many countries. Hong Kong is not the first place to have a total ban. We haven't identified any country which is making compensation. But it's, of course, it's not the case that Hong Kong should not do so since others are not doing it. Uh, we have, in fact, carefully considered the case and, whether, and on whether we should make compensation. As I said, in terms of um, the legal aspect, we are not infringing human rights and going against the basic law. So legally, there is no reason for us to make compensation. And we have indeed considered if we make compensation, will there be any uh, bad consequences? Let me share this with you. First, ivory trade. Why? It leads to elephant poaching and illegal activities and also jeopardizing people's uh, lives because uh, ivory comes with good value. So if we make compensation, and that is to say if the government pays and collects uh, ivory, and definitely there will be a lot of rumors um, internationally, um, and that will lead to more rampant smuggling. Now, just at the moment when we're discussing this, earlier on, we have already seized a huge um, amount of smuggled ivory. So it's not empty talk. I mean, my prop um, what I said is substantiated by facts. Now, second, if we make cash compensation and acquire the remaining ivory, if such messages uh, get out, there will be even more elephant poaching activities. And those are the ranges. Uh, more ranges will be killed even. I can't give you any uh, data on the risk which will be increased and so on, but we can't rule out such a risk. People's lives are important. So if we make compensation, the risk uh, will to human life will substantially be escalated. Also, uh, worldwide, 
we are also seeing um, p countries imposing a total ban. And as of today, there is no country which is making compensation. If Hong Kong does that, we will be the, but the first place to do it. We will set a precedent. We will make cash compensation for a ban. Not every country or government can have the financial capability to make compensation. If Hong Kong sets a precedent, we will be um, making it difficult for other countries to impose a ban without compensation. So if we do that, then that will not be good to those um, who are defending or protecting the elephants. Now, we have given 27 years for the trade to gradually and progressively uh, prepare for the total ban. We have heard the trade's views, and they said that in the 27 past 27 years, they are only left with 10% of their ivory stock. They have sold most of them. So we are now allowing even more time for them to sell the rest of the stocks. There will be a transitional arrangement. That is the most appropriate approach. Some uh, people in the sector may have to switch to other professions or occupations, so we'll help them, provide retraining to them, help them switch to other jobs. And that would be the best approach to deal with the ivory uh, trade ban. Some people also mentioned about the art carving, the, uh, tr the its value as a cultural tradition. We have also considered that as well. So in our amendment, we are trying to uh, give exemption to antique ivory. So these are artistic items. These can be exempted. Now for the uh, ivory carving or crafting trade, um, well, it uh, will actually hurt the elephants when we don't think that it should be propagated too, too much. So we have to, st we have already struck the balance between protecting the elephants and our um, ivory carvings. And some people said that, that the Hong Kong government should plow in more resources and also step up our law enforcement action. I can undertake that the government will have sufficient member manpower to enforce the law. So that's my response. Thank you. Um, Under Secretary, for your response. Any member wishing to ask a question, please raise your hand. Mrs. Regina Yip, followed by Mr. Peter Shill. Any other member, uh, colleague, who would like to ask a question? Well, since we have had ample time. All right, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Quatt as well. Every member will be given five minutes. Mrs. Regina Yip. Thank you, Chairman. For those of us here, well, no one will object to this amendment bill, and that is to uh, stop or ban ivory trade and also clamp down heavily on smuggling of ivory. I don't think anybody is against that kind of thinking, and I thank all the deputations and individuals coming, including the um, young children. The young children know about the issue so well, so it goes to show that the um, elephant protection groups are doing a very good job in publicity. Even the children are aware of the issue. So we're, we're not against this overriding principle. The question is, apart from protecting the elephants, we should be mindful about the livelihood livelihood of the ivory traders. Now, a lot of the ivory um, craftsmen are elderly people, and this is very much a dying trade. You talk about retraining. I mean, how do you expect them to be retrained? You, can't, you can shy away from compensation, but then how do you deal with these uh, old craftsmen? I mean, they are holding legal ivory. And for, say, a museum in Taipei, in Taiwan, um, the uh, legal ivory products, rhino products, are being displayed. So why can't we help the local people in the trade? Of course, the world around, we know that it is important to protect the elephants. We all know about these very saddening, saddening or tragic stories of the elephants. But why don't we show any mercy to the local traders? Under Secretary, please. I'd like to thank the member for your comment. How should we help the trade to transform and how we help the practitioners in the trade? Well, we definitely agree that help be given, so we will continue to have a dialogue with the trade to see how we can help them. Now, let's look at one single fact here. Now, in the past 27 years, they have sold 90% of their stocks of ivory, and they are left with only 10% of the stocks. So that leads us back to uh, an important question, whether we should be giving cash compensation. 
our stance is very clear. We think that the government should not be making compensation for the remaining ivory stocks. What we should do is to um, give them more time. Well, they've sold 90% in 27 years' time, so we, should we give them more uh, five more years? Sorry, the undersecretary. Well, if they know that they can't sell uh, five years later, so it's impossible for them to sell their existing stocks now. Now, if I'm going to buy an ivory product, maybe I would just uh, be buying, say, an ivory chopsticks, and um, and I hope that I will not be caught. Or so it's difficult for them to say sell 70 tons in five years. And the practitioners, the elderly people, they can't transform or go to another occupation. The government should um, care for them and put in the best arrangement for these old traders. Under secretary, we understand the members' concern. But let me reiterate, we didn't talk about total ban today. We mentioned that already 27 years ago. And the ivory traders should be expecting this total ban. Um, they should know it's coming some 20 years ago. Now, today, we must shut the gate, so to speak, and we know that there might be problems, so we are giving a transitional period or grace period, and we know that the um, practitioners are elderly people, and uh, five year, in five years' time, they will retire, right? So we would uh, deal with the problem, say, by allowing a grace period instead of making cash compensation. I hope that you can be sort of more innovative in your way of dealing with the practitioners. So, can we not make a distinction between uh, giving compensation to the traders and also uh, providing properly for the livelihood of the ivory traders? Uh, we can separate the two matters. Well, the the uh, they you are very good at publicity efforts. You can make disting, uh, distinction between the two matters. You are now say killing the craftsmen at one go here. And over the years, they've been working very hard, and if they dealt with ninety percent of the stocks, well, the government is very being very merciless here. You are totally ignoring them here, Under Secretary. Well, the, these are two separate matters giving cash compensation and also he, uh, helping the uh, practitioners. We can further explore into how to help the practitioners, but we have considered in detail, and we ha think that we should not give our con cash compensation. Mr. Peter Shu, Under Secretary, for the um, elephants in Africa and the rangers there, they've been killed. Is, is it the case that we don't sympathize with them? No. And on the contrary, we sympathize with them very much. And of, and of course, we don't support illegal ivory trade too. I don't agree having import and export of ivory trade any further because it will incentivize people to kill the elephants. Now, many deputations here have talked about the tragic stories of elephants being killed and rangers being murdered and so on. Well, these um, are very um, horrible stories, I would say. But these have nothing to do with the incumbent ivory traders. They don't kill the elephants themselves. In 1990, the government issued licenses uh, to the traders. They own 700 tons of ivory. And the um, the ivory came from the ivory then came from the elephants who were already dead. So for the uh, poaching in the past two decades, how how has it to do with the traders? Secretary well, in 1990, you uh, recorded 700 tons of ivory, but you allow for the uh, pre-convention ivory to be continued to be sold in Hong Kong. And because in 1990, you decided that pre-convention ivory can continue to be sold. The AFCD told me that there are now some 13,000 ivory items, ivory items in Hong Kong. I don't know the total weight. Have you made a record of that properly? The question is not whether the trade should continue. 
Well, the overall trend is that the trade should not continue. But the question is, for the people who have been involved in the trade all along, those involved in the traditional ivory carvings, they've been given a legal license before, and now you are stopping them from um, further engaging in their trade. They've not sold off all their stocks. They're, these are their properties. And you said that what you do is not going against the basic law, is not considered as taking away people's personal property. I don't think your argument stands. People are going bankrupt. Now you are moving the goalposts, uh, stopping them from selling their ivory. Well, say tomorrow, if you t uh, told uh, the property owners that they cannot sell their properties anymore, people will go bankrupt. Some people are investing into properties for investment purpose. Hong Kong is a, a capitalist economy. How can you say what you said? I, uh, China can, well, some deputation said that the China can impose a total ban, but the licensed ivory traders in China are state-owned properties. Of course, the state can put a uh, total ban immediately. But for Hong Kong, the situation is different. These are personal properties. I've talked to many expatriates uh, myself and the and I am against the continuation of the trade but for the existing practitioners you have to handle or deal with them properly we're talking a, a small group of uh, 300 people still we have to be just to them although their number is rather small Mrs. Yip also said here now if you did, don't deal with by way of a cash compensation, think of some other measures to help protect their properties. Well, the uh, ivory has already arrived in Hong Kong, and the AFD has recorded all the information. Oh, you have the records yourself, haven't you? Done a gatekeeping role. You have taken photos of the ivory products. Is it the case that you have not done your job properly? If that is the case, then that the onus is on you, not on the ivory traders. So the uh, ivory items come with a number, serial number, photos. So for whatever that comes later, it is illegal ivory, and you can catch, try to arrest the people. I, I, I. I also support increasing the penalty. We will not help the illegal traders. Now we have, we are concerned about the legal traders. Now the teacher uh, here just said that all the ivory traders are trading on illegal ivory as, as well. Well, don't say that. I don't think that's, that's true. Don't try to mix up the two groups of people. Under secretary, please respond. I would like to make two points first. In terms of the legal aspect, the ban is not breaching the basic law. I will not go dwell on it here. Second, we have considered carefully whether we should give out cash compensation. We think it's inappropriate. We can further explore how to uh, further help the practitioners. Dr. Elizabeth Quart, thank you, Chairman. I would like to thank all the deputations and individuals here for giving us your valuable views. Mr. Peter Shill said several times that uh, elephant poaching has n and uh, rangers being killed has nothing to do with Hong Kong traders. Well, maybe they are not uh, their killing is not directly related to you, but because you have a market here in Hong Kong, the elephants and the rangers are being killed. It's not a distant something very distant from us. Um, some deputations have talked about Ring Lotta. He's my friend. In 2015, I was in Tanzania. I was um, there at the P Pams Foundation, and he told me in detail how he did his investigative work, how he tried to track down on the smuggled ivory, how they trained the rangers, and the threats they face every day. And he told me that as long as Hong Kong continues to trade ivory market and there is still a black market, then the killing of humans and elephants will um, go on and on. And on the 16th of August, he was killed and shot. And I was so sad when I received this piece of news. I don't know. I was uh, speechless. And on that day, he said that I would try to uh, promote a ban of elephants. This is a dangerous task. But then 
while he was in Africa, he was fighting against the bullets, uh, the terror groups, and he was in a even in a more dangerous situation than myself. What we can do in Hong Kong is just a legislation. It is just a very small step compared to what he is doing. Is Hong Kong so distant away from Africa? Um, the elephants in in Africa are um, assets of the planet, and not just assets of Africa. So um, we should protect them. So I don't agree that uh, African elephants and African people have nothing to do with Hong Kong. I don't agree with that. It is in every way related to Hong Kong. So a lot of people here um, said that they support legislating on a total ban. And the question now facing it is just whether we should make compensation to the ivory traders. We have a lot of arguments on that. And my, for my political party, we have a lot of arguments on that as well. And the D, D, DAB has um, come up with its own stance. And that is we support uh, the government's legislative proposal to put a ban on the ivory trade. Uh, we don't think it's reasonable to make cash compensation. In what trades would you be guaranteed to be able to sell all your goods? And 90% um, has been sold off over 27 years and only 10% is left according to the traders. But at the same time, they are importing a lot of ivory even though they still have old stock. For the um, pre-convention ivory, which has been banned, well, who asked the traders to import them, and where did the ivories end up? Does the government have the records? Can the government tell us whether all the um, pre-convention ivory from UK or Spain are in Hong Kong? I want to know more about this. I'm sure the government would have some records. If we compensate, we would um, encourage even more poaching and killing in Africa. Is this something Hong Kong can pay responsibility to? Do any ivory traders actually survive on ivory trade? Over the past 10 or so years, you can look at the volume of ivory traded and can that amount really support 300 plus companies? The government must tell us what kind of problem we are facing nowadays. Will a lot of ivory traders be um, driven out if they are not given compensation? Thank you. Under Secretary. Perhaps I would invite the AFCD to talk about the import situation and the um, position of Hong Kong practitioners. Thank you. I will first talk about the import of ivory. Some deputations, including the trade, cited that after the um, 1990 pre-convention ban was imposed in the um, European Parliament, ivory could still be imported. After 1990, and um, ivory has been banned for trade for pre-ivory trade from 1975 to 76. For the Asian um, elephants and African elephants, import and export would still be allowed after year 1995 for pre-convention ivory. Over the past 10 years, we had about 13.9 tons. Together with 19.7 thousand pieces of ivory items. Most of these um, pre-convention, well, these um, among these um, ivory, 10, around about 10 tons were re-exported. Some members asked about the weights of the ivory. Most pre-convention ivory are antique items or um, certain um, keys on the pan piano made of ivory. So um, such pre-convention ivory could only be exported to Hong Kong with a permit 
and um, our authorized offices would verify the paperwork before allowing them to enter Hong Kong and the same goes for um, flights and according to the um, convention import and export is allowed. Mr. Ben Chen, thank you, thank you. After the meeting last time, the um, government offered a response, and um, we're now much more clear about the picture. The government talked about the local market. After the um, impact um, is is implemented, well, the government has all the information actually, and some of the materials are actually from Europe. But I think for us, the biggest problem lies in Europe. When the government addressed my question, I hoped um, that they can point out the um, countries within the EU in which every ivory exports are bad. And um, starting from July, the um, EU will stop the export of ivory materials, but the um, export of ivory items could still proceed. And um, if the items are considered end products, they can still be sold to Hong Kong. We do not want to see elephant killings in Africa, so should we stop this platform or channel for the um, import permits? Would the government verify that they are genuine? Yeah. Whether or not um, you conducted checks, can you tell us what have been done? Mr. Chen, thank you. We talked about pre-convention ivory imported, as I said, for all um, pre-convention -pre ivory, they must come with a certificate. And um, they would be inspected by FCD st staff. And um, members asked, with, asked about the um, integrity of the paperwork and if we have doubts, we would work with the um, CITES Secretariat so we would inspect all um, shipments in before they are allowed. For such pre-convention ivory, in the past they could be imported and exported. Recently, with the um, ban on import and export of ivory and as such the EU stopped exporting the ivory materials but according to the convention and um, they, they could still be exported. This is where the problem lies. Our government only looks at the certificate and um, if there are issues, they would consult the respective countries. So um, has the government conducted any current dating for um, this area? And how many of them are fake? All these um, expert permits carry a specific format. So if we have doubts about the permit, you can um, Consult the hotline. Did you carry out any current dating? The exporting country have the right to produce a permit or certificate. So does it mean you are merely placing your? Um, well, um, there would be no distinguishment between pre and post convention ivory. Mr. Chan. My question was, did you conduct carbon dating to make sure that the um, materials um, sent in um, comply with the um, requirements? I think a, a simple yes-no would not be enough. And um, 
for the isotopic carbon isotopic analysis, we can um, decide this the age of the ivory, but there are limitations to this method for for antique ivory items such as an antique um, piano. We must um, use invasive um, methods to take samples. So, in other words, you did not do it, right? Mr. Ben Chen, Mr. Ray Chen is going to speak for the first round, and then Sukhavai, Dr. Zhu, Quad, etc. We have four. Mr. Ray Chen, followed by um, Dr. Zhu, Quad, and Mr. Ben Chen. Mr. Ray Chen, you have five minutes. The um, two other members would get four minutes each. We will extend. The meeting until you finish asking your questions, Mr. Wei Chen. Thank you. I support the total ban against ivory trade. At earlier panel meetings, deputations offered their views, and we had a lot of deputations today as well, and they had very similar views. So we have heard all of their stances. I agree. I agree with. Talk with Mr. Sukafai that when we talk about assets and lives, figures are not the most important, and um, we do not um, adopt the views of the majority because in that case, the elephants are actually a minority. But we saw a an ecological crisis. That's why we must do something. And um, our only um, difference is whether. Conversation will be given with. I had some differences with Long Hair, the ex Lechko member, and um, he felt that conversation should be considered, and we should not compensate based on quantity because um, that would lead to more elephants being poached, and rangers could also be killed. If we do not Compensate on quantity. You can call it an aid or a, a subsidy or something along those lines. What can we do? So um, the question is not favorable because the messages are very confusing. If we announce that compensation is possible in Hong Kong, that would um, worsen the matter. So, um, what is the government's consideration? Charging by quantity would be a very bad idea. What about other kinds of aid or subsidy, Mr. Chen? Thank you very much. We have considered another approach, rather than quantity-based. But um, in terms of disseminating the message, um, it might not be clear all the time, and the message might be twisted. The government has a very clear stance on this bill, but that said, we saw a lot of um, substantial smuggling activities. So regardless of format, um, the well, um, our messages might be skewed, and some elephants might be killed, and um, some people who try to protect the elephants might also be killed. So, we should not um, shoulder such risks. And um, the undersecretary talked about some form of help or aid. Undersecretary. And um, we should not offer compensation, but um, we should help um, practitioners retrain themselves. And there are other things we can do. This is something we can further explore. We find a longer period suitable. We propose five years 
well, um, we are talking about very old people. If we offer another five years, most of them would retire anyway. So um, I will see if my colleague has anything to add. Mrs. Kwok, thank you very much. As the undersecretary said, And um, we have to think about the um, livelihood of the practitioners. The FCD is looking into that with them. The um, communication and investigations are ongoing. And some new um, skills might need to be picked up, but um, these do not apply to every ivory trader. trader. So um, we are looking at different options which could, which could potentially help them. Next, second round, Mr. Shukafa, you have four minutes. Thank you, Chairman. I want to clarify what Dr. Quad said on the potion of African elephants. What does it have to do with us? I sympathize with the um, death of conservationists and rangers. As I said in the previous session, the um, poaching of elephants have nothing to do with the um, selling of ivory from a long time ago by Hong Kong merchants. You might feel that some illegal people in Hong Kong um, and well, uh, I agree with so some of those claims that we cannot mix up both. You cannot talk about um, legitimate and illegitimate behaviors at the same time. I'm speaking um, for legal merchants who operate in Hong Kong, rather than uh, um, well, I well you can um, give them um, life sentence or heavier penalties, but um, we should not confuse both of them. I'm referring to. Um, those with certificates, you are telling them that they can no longer sell their ivory five years from now, their assets would evaporate and and um well, the convention was signed a long time ago, and a lot of traders are now very old. They used to invest a lot of money. And um, would that let would that um, lead to further opening up? Well, um, Satri, you have the records. The other people who come in would be illegal, and you can arrest them immediately. How can you mix up both of them? We do not support the poaching of elephants, and um, a lot of traders do not support it. But um, the key is how do we go with them? And um, and um, for the traders, for the um, ivory from 1967 or 1968, which are pre-convention, well, if you ban that line, um, those um, tons would be vanished a long time ago. So the problem lies with the government. Under surgery. Mr. Xiu, I understand your views, but I must stress that the ban on ivory trade did not happen today. I'm um, sorry, well, 27 years ago, we asked you not to allow other um, pre-conventional ivory to, to be exported. You talked about more than 13,000 pieces and we don't know, we don't even know the weight. Well, um, the um, figure must be very high. Hong Kong became an entrepot because um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have allowed pre-conventional ivory to come. 
but now、um, they are all here, so how would you deal with it? Thank you very much. But I stress that、um, the total discussions on banning、um, ivory is not new, so we have been preparing the trade for a long time. And、um, this is something they have been、um, doing for a long time. And、um, at some point, we need to impose a total ban. Doctor Quad, thank you. I want to follow up on the question I already asked. A lot of、um, debate today is on whether you are allowing the、um, pre-convention ivory to be imported here. You have records on all the、um, pre-convention ivory, so I'd like to know how much of them remain in Hong Kong. And、um, even if the ivory could not, not all the ivory can be sold off. Only 10% remain. Please tell us a proof picture,、uh, and then、uh, to save us on this、uh, argument, and we don't know what、uh, the true picture is. How how much has been imported and、uh, exported over the years?、Uh, in 1990, since the introduction of the international ban. We have imported 23.9 tons of ivory and uh, 19,000 uh, pieces, and we have exported 10.9 tons or 38、uh, pieces exported. So 80 percent have been exported. We have 380 pieces、uh, remaining in Hong Kong, so most have been exported. Why didn't you tell us earlier? So we've been arguing that because you allow imports, the the they, the traders、uh, could not、uh, sell off their stocks. If、uh, we only have 380 pieces remaining in Hong Kong and most have been exported, this argument won't stand. And I'm of course concerned about the the、uh, uh, price of the craftsmen. And what would the government do to help them if they need to? to Change、uh, jobs or trades.、Uh, Mrs. Kuo, thank you for your questions. As I've said, we are very concerned about the、uh, the, the situation with the craftsmen. The AFCD have been in discussion with them on、uh, ways and means to help them, and as we have、uh, said, over the years, many of those. Are no longer no longer to work as a craftsman,、uh, as not as a main job anyway. Many of them have changed jobs. For the remaining, we'll find ways that that can best help them. Many of them are approaching retirement age, so the discussion is ongoing. If they need, or the younger ones、uh, may need the、uh, retraining opportunities, we、we'll、talk to the relevant agency to see what.、Uh, Uh, programs,、uh, retraining programs, can be、uh, offered, and we will be we、we'll、talk to them uh, uh, on a、uh, continual basis. Some the children have spoken, including the one who have taken an elephant toy with her. I'm moved by their speeches, but let's、uh, fo be focused at the issues. And、uh, if we ban、uh, post-convention、uh, ivory, then、uh, the trade is not the driving force of any poaching. The fact that there is a mar there's a mark, there's a problem, because、uh, there have been、uh, post-convention ivory passing off as pre-convention ivory, and Hong Kong is used for re-export. But the official、uh, just tell us that they have certificates, and we check the certificates. So there are two issues here. We have pre-convention ivory in Hong Kong, which have been、uh, recorded in our inventory. They are not uh, uh, ivory from the elephants recently、uh, killed. 
they have been in Hong Kong for a long time. They are just uh, going to be disposed. On the other hand, that there are there are elephants killed, and ivory the poach. Where has the ivory gone? According to government documents, uh, Europe has introduced a ban on uh, raw material, but not on uh, artifacts and uh, products. And after the first of July this year, they will continue to export the uh, pre-convention pre um, products to Hong Kong. Should we close the door to such European exports? If we ask them to produce uh, different certificates and forms, and also they should uh, ask for the certificates of uh, carbon dating to prove that it's actually pre-convention ivory. We can do all these to prevent uh, uh, elephant poaching. I'm very much against poaching of elephants, but some green groups may distort uh, my uh, viewpoint. Saying that we are asking for an exquisite uh, allowance for the licensed traders. These people uh, work, operate in Hong Kong. We should protect their properties. According to the basic law, we should do this. But we should also be concerned about uh, poaching of elements. Should we stop uh, importation of anything, any ivory from uh, Africa? Can we ask for more uh, certification to prove that ivory imported to Hong Kong is actually pre-convention ivory? I thank Mr. Chen Han Bang uh, for raising this question, these questions, and that's why we have introduced this uh, bill. After three months after the enactment of this bill, we would. Uh, Prohibit. There will be a total ban on pre-convention uh, ivory importation and exportation. You don't have to wait for the bill. You can do this administratively. It can be done tomorrow and ban importation of uh, raw material tomorrow. All right. Thank you for coming to this uh, meeting in September. I thank all the deputations and individuals. For sharing with us your comments, including the, our guests from uh, other con overseas countries, I thank the government officials and all members of this bill's committee uh, for 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 their efforts, because uh, the council is uh, strictly speaking still in re summer recess. Uh, we'll continue with the scrutiny the, after the uh, council session resumes. On the 17th of October, it's a Tuesday, at 10:45, uh, we'll have another meeting. It's October 17th, 10:45. We'll. So, if there's nothing under AOB, meeting is now adjourned. Once again, I thank everyone who have attended today's meeting.